were excited when we first heard that Resident Evil's Shinji Mikami was teaming back up with No More Heroes creator Suda51 to make a new horror game for EA. Now that it's finished, is Shadows of the Damned the product of a masterful dream team, or has it suffered from having too many cooks in the kitchen? <laughs> I'm a Mexican, Johnson. Not a Mexican. Intentionally creating a B-movie parody without becoming the butt of the joke means walking a thin line, and Shadows of the Damned stumbles right over that line like a drunk at a traffic stop. Hey, fill those cracks with your explosive hot boner. You heard me. Demon hunter Garcia Hotspur has lost his girl to Fleming, the Lord of Demons, and he descends to the demon world to rescue her. Oh, no! To torture them both, Fleming and his servants dangle the girl just out of Hotspur's reach, repeatedly killing her as the hunter makes his way to the demon's tower. As hard as it tries, the game often fails to be shocking or funny, merely eliciting an awkward chuckle from time to time as you discover weapons like the big boner. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, show me, show me, show me! The sex and violence are laid on thick, and there are so many bad puns in just the first conversation that it becomes more tiresome than entertaining. Admit that you're... Endowment will never measure up to my own. Suda's penchant for the bizarre is also dampened by over-explanation as you encounter goat lamps, doors locked by baby faces, and alcoholic beverages that unkill you. Feels good. More poo de cuff. What does that mean? Must be a joke from the designers. The who? After working your way through an intro that prompts you to start the game three separate times, Shadows of the Damned follows a straightforward path through roughly 20 levels. Within each level, you'll pass through a series of gates and checkpoints marked by flaming piles of dung. Does Willy always take a big smoky dump in public? Ha! <laughs> you should see him piss! The game constantly blocks you from backtracking, closing doors behind you, or even preventing you from going back down a ladder you just finished climbing, making it easy to miss side areas with items and upgrades if you move on too soon. Well, I think I can <clears throat> keep it up. Ah, uh, TMI, Johnson. Your skull-faced sidekick Johnson transforms into various weapons, and boss fights reward you with blue gems that give him new abilities. The hot boner lets you plant explosive charges on cracked walls and enemies, while a machine gun alteration lets you lock onto multiple targets. Likewise, scattered red gems upgrade attributes like health, damage, and reload speed. While the core game focuses on shooting demons, finding strawberries that serve as keys, and fighting bosses, Shadows of the Damned does a good job of bringing variety to the standard action formula. Simpler moments include chase sequences, a quick game of bowling, and a scene where you're holed up in a house like Resident Evil 4. One twisted puzzle level requires you to rotate pathways to advance. There's several side-scrolling shooter levels with a scrapbook art style, and Garcia takes hold of the big boner to clear shooting galleries connected by warp zones with giant naked women. While these scenes serve as a distraction, once the novelty wears off, they quickly grow tiresome, especially the 2D levels, which move at a snail's pace. Plus, once you've completed the 8 to 10 hour quest, there's not much to come back to since there are no extras or incentives to play again. I just want to give up and die. <laughs> Shooting mechanics in Shadows of the Damned can be likened to a more agile Resident Evil 4. You can move and shoot, but aiming with the off-center laser sight feels awkward at first. Your main arsenal consists of a trio of upgradable guns that are equivalent to a pistol, machine gun, and grenade launcher, with a torch that serves as your melee weapon that can knock enemies back or be charged for a lethal swing. Additionally, you have an unlimited light shot that's used to stun demons, light lamps, and dispel shields of darkness. <laughs> Much of the game involves mechanics of light and darkness. In darkness, your health drains and demons can't be harmed, so you'll need to find ways to light up areas like shooting goat lamps, following mobile sushi lamps, and disposing of creatures that spread darkness. However, you'll also have to dip into the dark to trigger certain switches or harm some enemies. At its best, the interplay between light and dark forces you to solve puzzles quickly, but at other times, it's a repetitive nuisance that has you mashing buttons to launch short-lived fireworks. <laughs> The game's standard-issue demons don't differ much from mindless zombies that can be killed with a well-placed headshot, while others shield themselves with masks or armor. Bigger enemies require you to use dodge and stun moves to line up shots on red weak points, but once you've mastered the controls, most become pushovers. Late in the game, pairs of spiked demons will roll at you like Sonic the Hedgehog, but the AI is so idiotic that you can easily bait them into stunning each other.
Meanwhile, boss fights tend to be more interesting early on, but by the end of the game, they become more tedious than challenging. Despite the bizarre demon world the game is set in, the game's visuals don't have much personality. Aside from Christopher, the wonderfully eccentric shopkeeper, creature designs seem generic as well. The blurry visuals are plagued with slow texture load-in, and a glitch in one level can let you walk through walls and survey the area without triggering enemies. On the audio front, the atmospheric soundtrack from Akira Yamaoka of Silent Hill fame is easily a highlight of the game. But one of the toughest enemies is also the bearer of one of the most annoying and repetitive sound effects. <laughs> Vamanos! The underworld lies just beyond the sound barrier. How do you know? That's like super classified demon information. <sighs> Not according to the internet. Perhaps unwittingly, Shadows of the Damned accomplishes what it set out for by providing a B-level experience in video game form. It has more than its share of groan-worthy one-liners and irritating gameplay mechanics, but there's enough oddness and variety for it to pull in a cult following. If you think this one's for you, just be sure to give it a shot before putting down a full 60 bones. Just warn me if I have to fuck a horse to unlock a door.